Here is the third video in my series on 1970s murders and cults. This one is shorter than the first two videos and is noteworthy in that no one got killed. This one did have Manson cult member Squeaky from. This was the final nail in the coffin that landed Squeaky behind bars. During Gerald Ford's presidency, it seemed that he wasn't too popular with the ladies. Two women, Sarah Jane Moore and Lynette Squeaky Fromm, tried to shoot him in the span of 17 days during the month of September in 1975. This is the only time that a woman, never mind two of them, have ever attempted to assassinate a president. Gerald Ford was the 38th president of the United States succeeding Richard Nixon after Nixon resigned in the aftermath of Watergate. In spite of what many people thought, Ford was anything but boring and was not just the president that pardoned Richard Nixon. Ford worked as a male model, two of his assignments being a 1940 Look Magazine issue titled A New York Girl and Her Yale Boyfriend Spend a Hilarious Holiday on Skis and a 1942 Cosmopolitan cover where he is pictured in his Navy dress uniform. He was also an All-American center at Michigan. He had offers to play professionally from the Detroit Lions and Green Bay Packers after college, but instead chose to coach at Yale while attending law school there. During World War II, Ford served in the Navy and, while president, signed Public Law 94-106 which admitted women to previously all-male military colleges, West Point, Annapolis, and the Air Force Academy. You'd think that with that kind of track record, women wouldn't be trying to shoot him. Were these two women mad at Ford for pardoning Nixon? Did they hate his modeling photos? What were their reasons for trying to bump off Ford? Let's take a look at the two women involved. Squeaky Fromm was introduced previously in my video on the Charles Manson cult. As I alluded to in that video, Squeaky was a follower of Manson and was one of his earliest followers. On September 15, 1975, she attempted to assassinate President Ford in Sacramento, California. She stood about an arm's length away from Ford but since she didn't pull back the gun slide to insert a cartridge in the pistol chamber, the gun didn't fire. Before you ask, her motivation wasn't because he pardoned Nixon, but to make a statement about environmental pollution. Squeaky Fromm was born in Santa Monica, California, the daughter of an aeronautical engineer and a stay-at-home mom. At some point, her father stopped talking to her, and all communication was done through her mother. When Fromm was in high school, her family moved to Redondo Beach, where Fromm began experimenting with drugs. After graduating from high school, she briefly enrolled in college, but dropped out approximately two months later. After the Manson trials, Fromm moved to Sacramento, where she and four others were arrested for the murders of James and Lauren Willett. The other four, including Aryan Brotherhood members Michael Moorfort and James Craig, confessed, and Fromm was the only one of them to avoid charges. Fromm's luck ran out when she attempted to assassinate Gerald Ford, and she finally found herself behind bars. The Gerald R. Ford Presidential Museum has this gun on display. In 1980, while serving time in the federal prison camp in Alderson, West Virginia, Fromm claimed that she purposely ejected the top round of her gun, claiming that her intent was never to kill Ford. However, when she tried to assassinate him and the gun didn't go off, she shouted, It didn't go off. Can you believe it? It didn't go off. This would suggest that her claim of not wanting to kill him isn't true. Three days before Fromm's trial, President Ford gave videotaped testimony from the White House this was the first time that a U.S. president ever testified in a criminal trial. The trial started on November 4, 1975 and ended on November 19, 1975. 
She was convicted of the attempted assassination of a president and received a life sentence. During her imprisonment, Fromm escaped in December of 1987, and because of this, she received extra time. Fromm was released from prison on August 14, 2009, two and a half years after Ford's death. She was 61 years old and had served 34 years in prison. She moved to Marcy, New York, moving in with another convict, Robert Baldner, who was convicted of killing his brother-in-law. Seventeen days after Fromm's assassination attempt, on September the 22nd, 1975, Sarah Jane Moore attempted to assassinate President Ford in San Francisco. I had forgotten that these two incidents were so close together. Fortunately, Ford completed his presidency without any more crazy women trying to kill him. Moore, a five-times divorced nursing student from West Virginia, turned to revolutionary politics in 1975. In San Francisco, standing 40 feet from Ford in front of the St. Francis Hotel, she fired a single shot at him. Unfortunately for her, she didn't bother to check that the sights were off by six inches from the point of impact, so she missed. The bullet struck the wall of a doorway behind Ford. When she tried to fire again, a former Marine in the crowd, Oliver Sippel, grabbed her arm and the bullet hit a taxi driver. He survived the shooting. The San Francisco police placed Moore under arrest while the Secret Service pushed Ford into his limousine. The limo then headed to the San Francisco airport and Ford returned to Washington, D.C. The day before the assassination attempt, Moore was detained by police on an illegal handgun charge. They confiscated a 44 caliber revolver and 113 rounds of ammunition. She was then determined to be low risk and released. Moore pled guilty to attempted assassination of a president and was sentenced to life in prison. At her sentencing, she said she was sorry because she had thrown away her life, and at the same time, not sorry because she thought it was the appropriate expression of her anger. And what did President Ford have to say? He described Moore as out of her mind. Moore served her time at the Federal Women's Prison in Dublin, California. In 1979, she escaped and was recaptured. Later on, while she was serving her time, she stated that she regretted the assassination attempt and that she was blinded by her radical political views. Moore was released in December 2007 at age 77 after serving 32 years. Her release was the result of a federal law that makes parole mandatory for people who have served at least 30 years of a life sentence. To show that no good deed goes unpunished, the man who saved Ford's life, Oliver Sippel, received a good amount of publicity, praising him as a hero. Unfortunately, all the media attention outed him as gay, something his parents weren't aware of. His parents then proceeded to disown him. Later on, they reconciled. So here ends the saga of President Gerald Ford and the women who hated him. Stay tuned for the next video in this series on serial killers and cults on Ted Bundy. No promises on when that video will drop. Please remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to support my channel.